there, it's Laura from Laura Womwell Photography. And joining me today are an amazing local pet and it's human. Today we have Shirley Wijaya and her um, amazing dog Kiba. And he is a standard poodle and he is so handsome. Hi, Shirley. I'm so excited to be chatting with you. Hello, nice to meet you. So today's interview is all about meeting a local pet um, and getting to know the people that love him and what you guys love to do together in southwestern Ontario. So I would love to know a little bit about how you found Kiva and how he came to live with you. Uh, we got him from a breeder. Uh, funny story, actually, I was actually afraid of dogs growing up. Okay. <laughs> Yes, I like I I hated dogs. I I told Yogi, my husband, that if we had kids, we wouldn't get any dogs because I'm afraid of them. And then, and then my sister, uh, uh, my sister's roommate uh, got a Pomeranian, uh, and then uh, she didn't really care of him, and my sister took care of him, and then we ended up caring for Macha when uh, he was about maybe four months old and then my sister went back home for the summer holiday. So that was my first foray into, um, into dog and into puppy. <laughs> I remember very clearly that um, um, I was really happy that I was able to hold him and I wasn't afraid. <laughs> <laughs> he was really small. He, He's only 15 pounds right now. So when he was when he was four months old, he was like really tiny. And then my sister would be like, oh my God, uh, if you're afraid of him, that's something's wrong with you. So it's a big jump from a Pomeranian to a standard poodle. So yeah. how, did you, how did you end up with that? I, I realized that um, I was like, okay, maybe starting from a small one. And then um, I had a friend and we took him in because uh, he was getting homeless. So we're like, okay, you can come in with us. I stayed with us for a bit. And he had his husky with him. So that was my first foray into a big dog. And I fell in love with a big dog. It's easy. It's, they are not as fragile. So you know what, when they moved out, I told Yogi, I think we're getting a dog. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, so we decided on a poodle. Uh, at first we decided on doodles and then we realized that um, the, the common one, uh, the common breed between all these doodles are poodles so we look into it and then we got a standard poodle because at first we were talk, uh, we were thinking about a mini and then um the, the breeder was like uh yeah mini is only like 15 inches high and i'm like no that's like my chest size that's a bit too small and yeah anything above 15 is standard so yeah that's how we got a that's how we got him. So when you were seeking out your breeder, um, obviously you did a bunch of research reaching out to uh, a bunch of different places. How did you settle on Kiva? It was just whoever available at that time because I already knew what I wanted. I, I want a breeder who does uh, health testing, uh, all the genetic testing, all the hips, uh, all eyes and everything. And I also want them to be shown or I didn't know about sports at that time. I only know about confirmation. So I want them to be titled. So most of the, uh, all of the Poodle Club of Canada breeders, they're already been uh, they already been tested, so I knew that I would be getting what whoever breeder I'm, uh, I'll be going with, uh, they'll be fine. So his breeder was the only one who had um, who had a litter ready for around August. So we came to visit them around around this time of the year, around July ish, July yeah, around July. We visited them. We met with the parents. Uh, she owns the she owns his dad, and then I think uh, she also cared for uh, his mom. So we went and visited them, and they were very lovely. I always thought that, oh, I love adults because they're, they're fun. I don't need to care for them as much. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of puppy, especially after raising him. But yeah, 
I, I, I played with him, I played with them and they were just very lovely. And then I asked questions to the breeders and um, the breeder asked us questions about our lifestyle, um, our everything. And we told him, we told her that um, we, we trust you into choosing the puppy for us. Uh, and then we came and visited them again when they were born, after they were born at around six weeks, I think. It was we. Uh, my sister came with us, and I think we it was really hard to live. <laughs> so he's a, still a pretty young dog, and I know you've had him in a variety of training. So, what were some of the challenges that you had as you were raising him? Uh, he's a very overexcited dog. Uh, going at around six months he started barking we took uh, agility with jess at impressive canines and he started barking a storm whenever he sees other dogs running and we had no idea what to do and then after that we're like okay so we spend most of our agility time between me and yogi one of us would be inside and the other one would be outside with him and then when he's coming down we took him inside again and so on for like eight weeks we had no idea what was going on and then he started getting anxiety in the car he 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 was a really good puppy in the car he would sleep and it would feel like you had no dogs in your car but i guess he grew up he could see outside mm. and that's when problems start he starts barking at incoming cars and so on so we we did everything that we could and then we, we ended up doing a desensitization on, with him. Um, we tried, we, uh, we, we did everything. We, we did it from the beginning when the car is being started, when the car is moving. And now it's kind of manageable. Mm -hmm. As long as he's tired, he's okay. And also I put him in a crib because I cannot deal with it. <laughs> He'll be barking and he'll be like, and he's tall, so I cannot see my rear view mirror. <laughs> I cannot see. I. I cannot see anything. If, if I take my blind spot on my left, there's him. On my left, on my right, there's another of him, his back. So I'm like, I cannot deal with this. It's getting really dangerous. And sometimes he would put his face in, uh, in front, um, on top of my head. Oh. And I'm like, no, I would like to be safe. <laughs> Well, and it's it's all about setting them up for success, right? And figuring out what works for your dog. Exactly, yeah. And then because of that, we, I, I wasn't giving up. <laughs> I was like, okay, if you don't like it, we'll do this. We, we tried different things, but I ended up just going, the, the crate was a lifesaver. I, I should have done that earlier. And after that, I just decided, and then I think around, like, around one year old, um, most of my friends are doing sports. So I got the sports box from them. And I found out that, oh, okay, there's, um, uh, there's a CKC judge in Cambridge, companion dog training. Uh, she does rally, nose work, and obedience. So I decided to go for the obedience level one and see how it goes. So we did until level three. Uh, he, when we first came, he was barking at dogs just walking patiently just just healing just just not even running so i'm like <laughs> it, it, it was a lot of trial and error i think around uh 18 months uh i finally went into agility um i go with a chat at all agility in cambridge and he was screaming we spend most of our time inside the washroom whenever other dogs are running and i decided you know what um I have to do something. Mm -hmm. So uh, one of my friends told me that um, yeah, I should be looking into Control Unleash. So uh, she gave me the PDF of the first book. I read, I read the first chapter or two, and then I just, it, it, I just did it by myself. It's basically uh, the disengage, disengage game. It's my favorite game. Mm -hmm. He he's a very visual dog. He likes to stare. Mm -hmm. He's like a herder. He likes to stare. And when he stares, it triggers him. He gets really overexcited and then he barks. Mm -hmm. So letting him stare and then 
giving him the food to reorient back to me, it actually very helpful for him, which is weird. So he does a lot of, I'm looking at that, and then he looks back at me, and before I know it, his, his not perfect, but he's much better. So he is still doing agility now. And is yes. that something that you're hoping to continue along with? Yeah, I'm planning to do trials with him. So uh, I've been taking workshop with Brittany and any other really, or any other fun matches that I could find. Um, I just want him to get um, comfortable in different environment with um, different equipment because as uh, as we found out, if the agility bar is striped, mm. he thinks that is a new thing. So I had to I had to teach him how to jump again. Wow! <laughs> yeah, we we found out last year. Um, my trainer put up uh, stripe bars, and then he didn't want to jump. Huh. And then he said, I had no idea. This is the first dog that actually realized there's a difference between between stripe and not stripe. I mean, poodles are pretty smart. So. <laughs> like, yeah, I also had no idea. And also when we did our obedience, um, uh, she set up um, Christmas decoration on the top. And then Kibo was the only dog who noticed that. Maybe because he was tall, I had no idea. But my trainer also said the same thing. He kept looking up, he kept looking at the decoration and he's the first dog that actually notices that. Oh. He's a very visual dog. <laughs> very visual, which makes, if, yeah, which makes life a little bit challenging. But now that I know how to manage him well, it's, it's better. <laughs> Do you have any favorite spots that you like to go with him here in southwestern Ontario? We haven't really go much, um, mostly because he was reactive mm -hmm. and we were just discouraged of going. We would be going and then, oh, there will be dogs over here, there will be uh, bikes over there. But um, we went to Victoria Park, we did desensitization with him over there with the bikes, but uh, he got triggered by the geese and then the squirrels. Uh, and then we haven't gone there again, but we went a couple times. Uh, it was, I think, the first time that I was actually feeling, um, we, we are, going to do something and we actually up, it's actually doing better so yeah we just go around the house I'm I'm blessed I have two woods around the area in the winter I would go towards one of them and then just let him drag his long leash over there are there any resources that uh, we don't have here in southwestern Ontario that you would like to see? I think we pretty much have everything over here, especially in Waterloo, we pretty much have everything because when I talk to my friends, they're like, how come do you have access to all these sports? Mm. And I said, I don't know, because I, I look into one, I look into this and then they have sports. I look into another one, they have sports. Like wherever I look, people are offering sports here and there. Nice. So it's it's just really nice. And then we have hiking places all around the region, <clears throat> around, around the province. Uh, we didn't really go into Southwestern Ontario much, mm -hmm. but uh, we go to uh, Midland, like Mid-Ontario-ish, uh, Quarta Lakes. Uh, we usually go for Airbnb over there. and I definitely choose BNB in the middle of nowhere and with a huge backyard. Mm -hmm. So that we are just the only ones there and then Kiba can run around as much as he wants. And he loves it. Like we went to, um, we went to Kawarta Lakes just recently about two weeks ago. Uh, it has a lake, Kiba doesn't swim, but uh, he's getting really interested in water right now. Uh, and they have this uh, floating mats on the lake. So he would jump from the dock to the floating mat. Oh, cool. Back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Back and forth. And we're like, 
okay, great. Now you can chill. You can cool down by yourself. And then uh, they also had a pedal board. And then it was my first time on a pedal board. I'm not really a water person. Like I like to hang out on the lake, but I don't really like a uh, deep lake. <laughs> I don't really like being on the deck. Uh, I'm scared of deep water. Um, my sister and I, we went uh, pedal boarding and Kiba decided, you know what? My humans are there. Let me jump to the water. And he jumped to the water, to the pedal board. I didn't even have to do anything. Counter conditioning to the pedal board. Nothing. He jumped by himself and I just lift him up and he sat behind me. Wow. It sounds like you guys have an absolute blast together and, uh, and that you really get to enjoy a lot of things that this region has to offer. Yes, we, we really do. Yeah, we really do. Like this region is so much fun. We went to the dog beach uh, two years ago when he, I think he was around, after he was neutered, I think. Around, so that was around one year old. Uh, as soon as the fat says, you're okay to go, the next day we went. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> and I think that was the first time that uh, my husband said that he was actually enjoying time in the, in the water with him. But the drawback is, um, since he's really tall, in order for him to actually float, we have to go to the middle, mm -hmm. and the water was up to my neck until he could finally float. <laughs> nice. And, yeah, <laughs> but he, he had so much fun. I put a life jacket on him, so um, I just hope a lot of, a lot of people uh, see that and uh, started putting life jacket on their dog, because... It's, it's the safest thing to do. Even though your dog knows how to swim, it's just the safest thing to do for me. So Shirley, I really appreciate you spending some time with me tonight and, and uh, letting me get to know Kiba a little bit more. Thank you. Before we end off, I have a couple of quick fire questions for you. Okay. <laughs> All right, cat or dog? Dog. Favorite breed? Given that I have no idea about any other breeds, I would say poodles now. <laughs> I'm still learning about my dog breeds because I would be looking at dog and be like, I have no idea. They just look like a staffy. They look like a spitz. They look like this. And you will be like, oh yeah, this is the kind of dog. This is the kind of so, And then I'm also in a group of dog peoples and looking at their dogs makes me learn about their breeds as well. <laughs> nice. At least I know how a Boston look like now or a golden or a lab, but that's, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> any other ones I'll be like mm, I have no idea <laughs> <laughs> what is Kiba's favorite treat uh he's a garbage bin um, <laughs> um <laughs> I would say bread <laughs> <laughs> we we would bring bread as treats we actually uh, use bread for our desensitization training <laughs> Nice. What well, high value, right? Uh, it was high value. It, it is very high value for him. And then when he ran away, uh, I would use bread as well. <laughs> I actually did. Uh, we also do like a cooperative care training, especially for grooming, because he also didn't like it. But now he's getting better, as you can see on my Instagram. Nice. Um, we also use bread, uh, precisely croissant. <laughs> Awesome. Is Kiba full of beans, full of dreams, or full of something totally different? He's full of energy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. If Kiba were to be played by a human actor in a movie, what actor would play Kiba? Oh man, I don't know much about actors. <laughs> I really don't. Yeah, I really don't, so I cannot answer that. <laughs> That's okay. You can pass. All right. The last one. If money were no object and you had all the time in the world, what's one incredible thing that you would do to spoil Kiva? Oh, That's hard. He's, he's really easy to please. So <laughs> I, I would say like a big backyard. Mm. so that he can run free and be wild as much as he wish because um yeah funny story as well we uh we were invited by a friend of mine uh when when he was around one year old um <clears throat> he her codis was in the middle of nowhere like mm -hmm. literally in the middle of nowhere if we want to go there we have to cross the river
So yeah, we had to cross a river and then um, Kiba would play along over there and we literally just put him outside and he would run around that small little cottage for the entire day like. Wow. <laughs> oh man. The only time he stopped is when we call him in. Nice. And he was off list and I had I, I didn't really care about him being off list because it was like acres of land. <laughs> It was huge Amazing. to the point that even have their own hiking trail. So, <laughs> wow. So, yeah, we, we went, uh, they, they invited us. Uh, I think on our last day, uh, we went with her boyfriend to the hiking trail, uh, crossing the river, played in the river, and so on. And I think he had a blast. <laughs> <laughs> he loves it. And I love seeing him running free like the wild boy that he is. <laughs> he, he just loves the zoom. He really loves it. He, I think that's, that's how he, he enjoys his life. He's just like running wild, running free. Yeah, that, that's all I want. <laughs> I, I don't need a big house. I just need a huge backyard. <laughs> Well, Shirley, I have had a blast getting to know you and Kiba. So I know that Kiba has his own Instagram. So if people would like to follow your adventures, where can they find you? Uh, they can find us at Kiboodle, K-I-B-O-O-D-L-E, I think. Yeah, Kiboodle. <clears throat> we are, I would say we are pretty famous, actually. <laughs> nice. uh, uh, the first time we went to um, the bark uh the healthy barker with kiva because i don't usually take him to places the first time we took him there uh marina took a look at him's like oh my god that's kiva and then i i joined a lot of uh poodle groups in on facebook <clears throat> and then um our friends um people just overlap between instagram and facebook at this point and they look at me um they'd see the word kiva hmm brownie and we're like is that kiburo <laughs> so it's and it's just nice like i've got a lot of friends from my instagram <clears throat> we we met up with quite a few of them right now we went about 10 most of them are locals around here we met with ernie a couple times i'm friends with ernie we went we went with leia we met with a couple other friends and it's nice fantastic well, I really, really appreciate you setting aside some of your time tonight. And it was such a, a blast getting to know you both. Thank, so you. thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> this is Laura from Laura Walmall Photography. And I was joined by Shirley Wijaya and the amazing and talented Kiba. And we all hope that you and your pets have an awesome day. Bye. Bye.